My name is Kristen, but everyone at Pencils just calls me Kay. I'm a recent hire as an assistant art director, my main job consisting of being a background artist for a variety of projects and being an art lead for our newest project, Aralucha. What you are currently seeing is one of the last backgrounds I completed for the project, Michael's bedroom and by far my favorite background to work on, although this particular version ended up being scrapped for a background with a more preferable angle. Now, normally in a video like this, I would show my workflow for creating a background and further elaborate on the design process. But today, I'd like to go a little beyond that and give you a peek into the full creative process for those who are interested in the visual development for this animated short. When I first got offered to work on Aralucha, I was not yet hired full-time at Pencilish and was instead just finishing up on my freelance job with the backgrounds for Bjorn Episode 1. So, when I was offered the opportunity to help with a project focused on Lucha Libre, I was honestly super excited to challenge myself with something new and different. So, I got right to work. It was honestly a pretty hectic time as I was graduating, so it was a beast to manage everything at once. There were quite a lot of sleepless nights. First things first. I think a lot of artists can agree that one of the first things you'll ever do before touching your pencil to paper is research, and I had a lot of research to do. Mexican wrestling was something I had only heard about, and I realized pretty quickly that I was woefully uneducated in the subject. It's embarrassing to admit, but I kept saying it and writing it as Luce Libre, so I definitely had a couple things to learn in the beginning. Even if it's simply a quick animated short, I still desperately wanted to make sure that the world felt real and I wanted to help bring attention to a wonderfully rich and exciting community. So I spent as much time as I could watching documentaries, wrestling videos, and building a visual library from both real life and other animated series. Learning about Lucha Libre's impact on Mexico's culture and film industry was such a great experience. An unexpected fact that I learned about Lucha Libre was that it was actually picked up by the French military, who were stationed in Mexico at the time. They trained their soldiers using Greco-Roman techniques, which inspired the first professional luchador, Enrique Ucartachia. This particular style of wrestling became popularized in the early 1900s, but really didn't have an immense impact until the founding of EMLL, as well as luchadors like the masked wrestler and, of course, El Santo himself. I particularly loved that these wrestlers were icons in their culture. They were like real-life superheroes. I must admit, I fell in love with the community. Once I felt I had done an adequate amount of research for what I needed, I got right to work exploring several art styles and color schemes. I looked at how others were also approaching this idea with intensely graphic and bright styles, and although they were extremely appealing, I immediately tried to go in the opposite direction. For someone who also prefers a painterly style like me, it was quite the challenge getting out of my comfort zone. Most of my inspiration came from some pretty diverse areas, the biggest influence being one of my favorite boxing anime, Megalobox, as well as artwork from the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse. In appearance, they're two vastly different shows, but there were a lot of aspects about their designs and character that I really admired. I loved the look of the Think Inking styles and the warm red and brown color schemes that really made the brightly colored characters stand out. So I took the elements that I liked and tried to mix in a palette of intensely bright and saturated colors, inspired by the beautiful street art I had seen from Mexico, as well as colors from Era Lucha's own marketing campaign. Once I had a comfortable idea of the style I wanted, I quickly designed some prop sets to explore the inking and coloring styles and also get an idea of what I did and didn't like. Finally, I felt that I had found the exact look that I was going for, so it was time to begin my favorite part, environmental design. Since most of the short revolves around a wrestling ring, I went about designing that first. For the line work, I settled on a thick, jittery, almost comic book-like inking style, which I felt gave things a wonderful energy and texture. This particular design is heavily inspired by the actual wrestling ring that Aira Lucha owns, with some different color and design choices to bring out its warmth and character. I wanted everything to seem worn and well used, and I also loved the blinding ceiling lights I had seen before, which gave everything a nice warm glow. Designing Michael's bedroom was definitely the most fun I had working on this project. Although I'm hoping to completely redo it should the series progress, I felt that this was a great start. 
I was also super excited to get some wonderful insightful advice from a previous luchador, Conan, who gave me some tips and ideas to help the environments feel more accurate. From Michael's room, I knew I wanted posters to cover his walls, so for this shot, I popped in my favorite designs I had found in my research. When I got to know Michael as a character, I knew he didn't come from a well-off family, so I thought about how I could show this in his room. I pulled a lot of inspiration from my past as a poor college student, things like cinder blocks holding up the bed, furniture clearly being passed down from relatives, thrift stores, and dumpster diving, as well as other subtleties that helped really sell the idea of a messy but lovable kid. The only nice thing I put in Michael's room was his lowrider bike. In my mind, his mom bought it for him for his birthday. Now, before any of these backgrounds were even created, I had to figure out what colors to go with. After some research, I went ahead and made a rough color script. For those who don't know, a color script is a quick visual outline that helps map out all the colors for both the environment and the characters. During this stage in the process, I found some of the backgrounds would have been too plain and boring. So, I came up with the idea of introducing abstract sequences where the characters were surrounded by both Mexican and Aztec-inspired patterns that also invoked their personalities in both color and symbology. For the coloring style itself, I chose to paint with thick, messy strokes and a lot of texture overlays to invoke a sense of energy. In conclusion, I was very pleased with how everything turned out. I feel that my research and artistic exploration was a little surface level since it was my first exposure to Lucha Libre, so I hope should this project continue to flourish that I'll get the chance to learn and express even more about this amazing culture and community that I was really blessed with the opportunity to encounter. This is the first video I'm releasing in the Pencilish channel, so I'd really love to hear what you guys have to say, and I do take your feedback seriously. Also, my apologies if I spoke too fast or seem nervous. It's my first time ever recording my voice, so I was honestly a nervous wreck throughout the duration of this video. If you guys would like to express your interest or would like to voice your opinions or give feedback on what you'd like to see from this project, please feel free to voice your opinions in the comments below. I know you guys support Pencilish for the animation, but please know that your support also provides artists like me with the opportunity to pursue our dreams and ambitions. I would not be here if it weren't for you, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Until next time. Be sure to subscribe to the Pencilish Studios YouTube channel.